Hello and welcome back to my craft room. This afternoon I have been mostly playing with my February scroller box. So um, scroller box for anybody who doesn't know it is a monthly subscription kit where you get a box full of curated art supplies. Um, it's a complete mystery as long as you haven't managed to see any spoilers. Um, and half the fun of it is opening it up to see what's in the box. I nearly always am a thrilled to bits with the box very rarely I'm disappointed but sometimes one just stands out as being a special favorite and this is going to be one of those if you're interested in subscribe subscribing to scroller box um, you can use the link I'll put in the description box below and you can get three pounds off your first box and I get three pounds worth of scroller points to spend in the shop as well so that's not always nice um, anyway moving on let's have a look in case you haven't seen it this is what we got in the February kit so I've already decanted some of the supplies into my monkeys <laughs> I love this little pencil case because it does this so you can carry it around <laughs> and then it stands up like a little pot and is it but I've trashed it <laughs> Maybe I'll have to get my Posca pens out and then uh, tot it up a bit. So here's all the things we got. School of Zine, School of Sticker, Sweetie I've Already Eaten, artwork by the featured artist Kerry Lemon, who I really want to look into because I think she looks amazing. Um, and then we had the supplies were these brilliant fluid acrylics. I'm definitely going to get some more colours of these. The more I've used them, the more I've fallen in love with them. So the De La Rani, system 3 fluid acrylic now i use golden fluid acrylics a lot i think i actually prefer these and they're so much they're a hell of a lot cheaper and with golden it depends on the pigment um so they, they vary depending on what color you're after but yeah um, i think on the oh yeah you also get this little menu card that tells you 379 each i'll certainly pay a lot more than that for golden I'm running out of a lot of my golden paints now so i think i'm going to replace with these instead i'm that impressed with them and then we also got this uh, marker all permanent. So I saw permanent marker and thought it was going to be like your, your classic alcohol based permanent, you know, spirit based permanent marker. But it's not. It was like you had to shake it and prime it, but it's permanent when it's dry. But I also found that if you're quick when it's still wet, you can water it down as well. So you can mix these colours together and it gives you a lot more scope. And then we got this little angular brush as well. And they're really nice because you can get nice shapes with them you can get a good thin line if you're careful and you can get into little nooks and crannies it's quite a versatile brush actually having said that when i was playing this afternoon i did cheat and bring in all these other brushes <laughs> this is what i made this afternoon it's still drying one of the things i love is that when you dot with the paint like this straight out the bottle like you can see there you see there it leaves those raised dots well it stays raised so here is the swatching I did on the first day when I first got it and it's dried raised like this, so I love the feel of that really like that that's what gave me the idea of doing the mandala sort of effect right this is my proper piece I want to do now that I've been had left festering away in my head over the last few days so I'm going to need all them I've got a couple of little pots of water and my brush handy I'm actually going to use the box as well which is something I often do to give me a bit more scope. I had the, the paper that we got in the, in the box was this Canson Multimedia, which has got a nice, um, see if I can get a little camera to catch it. Yeah, there we are. A nice texture to it. Um, it's a good heavy weight, like 300 GSM, really sturdy. I'm also going to use the tissue, the tissue and the box itself. And what I want to create is like a springtime wreath because i think these colors are beautiful spring colors and um i just think they look really pretty and i can put it up in my craft room i want to color some of the um tissue well i, think, I love doing collage and um obviously the featured artist has done some collage here um and i love using tissue in collage because it just if, if it's cut if you paint it first or it's printed or whatever it's like the paper kind of becomes transparent when you glue it down and it just leaves the colour or the pattern as part of your collage. I, I love the effect of tissue so yeah so I will be using that and I'm going to use some of this for the base. So I want my spring wreath to have some little um, birds eggs in 
as well. I want to have some twigs sticking out, which is where this will come in. And this will give me a sort of sturdy base as well, is, that, is what I'm thinking. And I want just leaves and flowers. And they're going to be fantasy flowers and leaves. They're not going to be realistic. And I'm just going to let rip with this. I'm going to really enjoy playing with the supplies and getting lots of collage papers that I'm, I can then cut up. I'm not actually going to be painting the shape of flowers and cutting them out. I'm going to just paint the papers, really enjoy them, then cut them out, put them all together. I will also be needing, I've got a, a glue stick and, and some PVA there. I've got a little pair of scissors and a little finger knife. These are really nice to use actually. Help, helps especially when, because my grip strength isn't what it used to be. And then I will probably um, add some details by dotting straight onto here as well. I've got to bear in mind that with the wreath, to some extent you might see the underside of leaves and things because I shall be curling them up a bit later on, I'll probably what what I'll do is I'll I'll get something squidgy like an old mouse pad or something and I'll use like these or the the rounded end of the paintbrush to just kind of shape the flowers like that I'll show you that a bit later so yeah I'm just going to enjoy myself I can mix the colours either on here on my glass mat or I can mix them directly on the paper which is probably what I'll do because I just don't need to be too precise about anything I just really enjoy myself I mean, look at that just look at it and if I left that like that it would dry three-dimensional which I think is fantastic I'm not going to do that <laughs> well, I could also use my little water spray can I what I might do is just take one sheet out at a time so yeah I'm just going to just thoroughly enjoy myself at this stage oh look at that <laughs> now of course I'll start to get a green they've got a, um, a slightly odd almost oh, I don't know almost jellyish kind of texture to them I just yeah I just tipped that in the this is how it gets so grotty I just dipped it in there instead of the water oh, plonker all right I'm gonna get this really wet and I think what I'm gonna do is just press this onto it two for the price of one eh <gasps> Look. see so I could just really enjoy myself like this and um just cover all of these pieces with lovely colours. I need to keep some white as well and I need some very light ones. So of course if I mix with the white I'll get more pastel -y tones which I will want some of as well. And I also need to mix some black in to get some darker tones too. I don't need to think about it too much at this stage because um, I will have to get more deliberate when I cut shapes and things later on. As always my tools of choice are turning out to be my fingers so I can go through and do this and then I can go back and um, do all the other sides as well now what I might do here is just press some of the tissue on and that will colour my tissue as well and I can set that off to one side to dry and it might leave an interesting texture on the paper who knows But be very careful with the tissue it is quite fragile and any little bits of texture and things will all be useful just going to try I think with the black if I put that straight on the paper I might end up it, I won't be able to mix it so well but there we go I could I could play like this all day yeah thrilled to bits with these paints love them This brush is a bit too little to work as quickly as I want. <laughs> It'll be more useful later when I come to do more details maybe. Because possibly once I make the leaves and flowers I might then want to add a bit of shading to them. Oh, there's some nice leafy colours there, eh? Oh, look at that. Of course I could layer these as well because they are, especially the yellow, it's quite transparent. The blue's a little bit transparent as well. Which is the same with the golden fluid acrylics actually. Oh, got some lovely leaf colour there. 
and texture. So yeah, I'm probably going to have a combination of something like daisies, primroses, kind of uh, forget-me-not kind of things, um, and then a few different shades of green because that's what spring's all about. Um, so I'm thinking it might make more sense if I another sheet more blue, another sheet more yellows, put some of the white in with them as well, and then a couple of sheets of green, and then I can leave them to dry. Well, I can often get dinner ready and then come back and hmm, then probably I want to do the other side and then once they're all dry I can start cutting them up to make my piece. I need to make sure I do a sheet which will be largely for the bird's egg so let's see if I can get a kind of a bird's egg colour, kind of robin's egg blue so it's going to be a lot of white, a tiny bit of blue, a little bit, a tiny tiny bit of yellow I think as well. That's pretty good robin's egg blue and I reckon that with patches of the black in there because they have they sort of have that speckle don't they so I might be able to do that by dropping it in oh yeah that's a good uh, oh it looks nothing on my stupid camera lighting situation it's it's a really pretty robin's egg blue kind of color in real life let's make it not all perfect let's put a bit of uh, I'll go in with the fingers, the brush is just too small. <laughs> Try just flicking this a bit. Oh yeah, that'll do. That'll work. Okay, so I'm going to um, work through and finish a few more sheets like this and then I will come back and see you when I'm ready for the next step. Right, <clears throat> my pieces are all painted and dry. I like how um, these have a slight sheen to them when they're not mixed with white, which is similar to like, with the golden fluid acrylics actually. These will be like leafy ones, leaf and, and blue. That one's blue, that one's yellow. I can use my my swatching page. So what I'm going to do now, oh and I've got this which I was kind of mopped up with really. So I'm just going to take tiny pieces of this probably and just tear it, just tear it up and roll it up like that to make little blossoms. So that's my idea. So I'm going to spend probably quite a while now cutting out different shapes of leaves and flowers. I'm, I'm going to make them all and then start assembling my wreath rather than do it as I go along. So I need to cut more first and then I'm going to shape them. So I'll show you a little bit of the cutting but it'll probably take me a while so you won't want to watch all that. <laughs> Right, so um, I can't remember exactly where I was when I last left you because there's been a lot of water on the bush since then. The, uh, we, had, we had the um, Saturday Night Live birthday special last night which went really really well and um, lots of people joined our new Discord. I will put, I'm going to put a link tree below where you can go to find links to all of my socials. The um, Arty Fartist Discord server is a new thing. Uh, it's a place where you can get together and you can all. Um, I'll tell you about. I'll tell you about it a bit later before I go. But I will put links to all of that below. So yes, a lot of water under the bridge, um, and I can't quite remember where I'd got to with this. I think I had just started using my uh, fluid acrylics. I hadn't used this one yet. My fluid acrylics in different ways to. Um, add colour to the um, papers in the sketchbook that came in the kit. So so that's the in inspiration piece by the featured artist. Organic Origins is my prompt. Let's put my sticker up here now in my sticker spot. Um, I must say it's been lovely having these nice fresh spring colours because it's a bit cold and dark and dreary outside at the moment. So my sketchbook now looks like this. It is empty. Oh, oh no, I missed one. Oh no, that's the <laughs> that's the first piece that I did. So yeah, the sketchbook is now empty. 
and I have turned it into this. <laughs> so I've, I think, yeah, I think I had started cutting when I left you last. Yeah, that's, that's where I'd got to. Yeah. So um, I've now finished cutting up all the pieces. I'm going to, and I've even dyed, um, coloured all, all the tissue. So I'm going to sort these out now into little piles, like, like with like. And then I'm going to just shake them a little bit before I start forming them into a wreath. And the base of the wreath will probably have to be part of the school of ox. I could also use um, this, but I, I tend to keep these because this is lovely, sturdy uh, grey board and it's really good for making um, little sketchbooks and things with. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep that and use the school of ox, I think. And I will probably cut some twigs from the school of ox too. So oh, let's start with these because these are easy peasy. So I've got a few little very simple tools I'm going to use. I've got this wooden knitting needle. I've got a bone folder. I've got my pokey tool and one of these embossing things. You could also use things like, um, well, actually that might be handy as well. Like the end of that paintbrush is rounded. That's quite useful. Um, it's whatever, yeah, just you can sort of, you can do this with whatever you've got around really. Um, so with these, what I want to do is just give them a little bit of a, of a cup shape. I'm going to start with the bigger, that end because it's bigger. And I'm just going to do that in the palm of my hand to give it that little bit of a cup shape. Then if I wanted it to be more cupped, I could go onto a smaller one and uh, round it like that. And you can see that's cupped it even more. So these I'll probably just leave single and I'll perhaps put a dot. They're, they're sort of reminiscent of forget-me-not flowers or something like that. I'll put a little dot of white or yellow in the middle straight out of the straight out of the paint tube. Because uh, as I said, I think earlier on, um, although it's a couple of days ago now for me, <laughs> um, I love the way the, the paint dries, raised. So you've got that little, little bump. Yeah, so... Those I will do that way. These daisies, um, I will probably just shape a little bit. I'll just ruffle them up a bit and I'll stack them. How many did I make? It's very. This paper was brilliant and it's a bit of a shame in a way to cut it up. But then having said that, it needed to be that sort of weight paper to take all that wet media that I threw at it. And also it's now robust enough for me to shape it without it tearing stuff. So it's perfect for that. Um, so yeah, I will just ruffle them up a bit. I seem to have made six, so I could make three daisies out of this. Just I will ruffle each one up, just to give it a bit more of a realistic look, and then I will put one of these centres in. And I might just cut another little snippet. I'll keep that by me just to raise that centre a little bit. I could also, again, just slightly shape the centre just to make it slightly convex. I don't know if the camera will really show you that difference but it, in real life it will make a difference and I might find I need to put a little tiny little piece underneath just to support it when I glue it on. I'll see how that goes. So that's what I'll do with those. These it will be much the same and I'll probably put dots of white paint in the middle of these and I'll just stack them up I want them to look these to look a bit like dandelions so because this is this is wildflowers and weeds wildflowers and weeds are pretty much the same thing to me <laughs> I find it really hard to kill weeds in the garden so I want these really stacked up and fluffy and um, so I'll probably just make two out of that Narcissi I will just use my fingers to just curl each petal like that and then I'll st I'll stack them up and glue them these again I will probably just give them a bit of a curl sometimes I'll curl them one way and then curl them out again at the tip so that you get that kind of effect that can look really pretty 
Um, not sure whether I will stack these. It might look better if I stack them. Or I might do them singly. I'll, I'll, I'll decide that as I go along. Same with these. I think with these they do need to be stacked. I'll probably stack three together with the with these ones. And I like how you get all the different... Most of these pieces I did both sides. Um, and I like that you've got all the different kind of colour combinations and textures on there. When you look closely. It makes it much more interesting. So much fun playing with this paint and stuff. These I will just leave as they are possibly curl the leaves a little bit similar with that and that these I can't decide whether I want them that way up because oh, you can't really see it on the camera they're really pretty kind of very pale well, robin's egg because <laughs> I made three of these eggs as well and these I will very carefully and gradually start to curl I don't want it to crease but I do just want to uh, make these a little bit convex and I might need to put a bit of something a bit of the box or something behind to support these when I glue them on so yeah it'll take me a little while just working that with my fingers to get that paper to take the curves that I want um, and then leave some of the leaves I will just leave as they are some I might try just scoring like, like with these it strikes me that it would look good if they had kind of lines in them like that but I will do it a bit more carefully than I've done there um, get it to focus there we go yeah so I might just put lines in them like that and then I will just just curl them a little bit to give them a bit more life um, some of the leaves I will want to actually fold in in half pretty much to give them that seam but what I might need to do is um, I'll get something soft to lean on. Oh, I've got a mouse mat there. That'll work, won't it? So I'll get my mouse mat and I'll just make a line like that and then just fold it. Again, it just gives it a little bit more uh, life. Um, these will probably just need one line up the middle. With these ones, and certainly these larger ones, I might try scoring a line here and then doing some some more veins going that way. So all of that is going to take me quite a while. I'm going to sit and listen to an audiobook again. I think I've kind of shown you, the, oh, and these I will just curl. I want them to be kind of curly pieces to add to my wreath. Um, so I'm going to sit and work through and shape all of these pieces. And then when I'm ready to start putting my wreath together, I will come back and show you. So I have finished going through and shaping all in pieces um gluing them together where i needed to oh i haven't glued those on yet oh i haven't glued them together at all oh brilliant i thought i had these are glued together um i can fluff them up a bit more as i stick them on the wreath um these are all glued together these these and i've shaped all the leaves in different kind of ways I've also cut myself a circle as the base of my wreath. Well, it's not a perfect circle, but that's not going to matter. Um, I've cut some strips from the box as well. I could easily make some more if I need to. might cut these a bit shorter too, not sure yet. Um, and then I've, I've kept little pieces like this because I can use tiny, tiny little pieces to bump things up and give them a bit of dimension if I need to. Um, I'm going to swap to a stronger glue now. I might even have to get my hot glue gun out, but I'm, I'm hoping this will work. I'm not too lazy to get my hot glue gun out. So I'm going to go quiet again now and just start arranging things on this wreath. I haven't really got quite enough space. If I wasn't trying to film it, I'd probably do the arranging on a separate <laughs> table, but I'm doing my best. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have to come back when I've um, and show you when I've got it all arranged. Sent, I think, yeah, probably what I'll do is I'll tell you sort of roughly how I'm what I'm thinking because I probably will dither about quite a bit so I like odd numbers of things ones threes fives you know you know what odd numbers are <laughs> so I'm probably like where I've got these three flowers I'll I'll um you know roughly evenly space them around I've only got two of these but you know I'll also think about not just 
those particular flowers but that size and shape of flower so I've got three of those and two of those so that's kind of five that are roughly the same size and colour um, I've got four of these but these are about the same size so that's sort of seven all together so I'll, I'll space those around um, I will probably start by building up a bit of a base with these which I may need to cut shorter and I may definitely will probably want to cut I may definitely will probably <laughs> want to cut more of these just to get me a sort of base to my base I've got plenty more material because I've still got half the box left and um these white ones and colored ones will go sort of nearer the top uh, so probably yeah, I'll put some sticks in then I'll I'll start popping in some leaves I wanted to have some white ones as well as the green ones just because I think that will look lighter and brighter and um, I don't know I just I like the papery look of it <laughs> if that makes sense so I'll probably get the leaves in first and then pop the flowers in um, as I say I can use pieces of this to bump things up if need be I could even make little not stems because they're not, not going to show but just like little kind of props to hold the flowers up if that makes sense my plan was to lay it all out on a big piece of paper first and then transfer it but I kind of feel now that I want to just let it grow organically <laughs> organic origins as I go along well I, I will start trying to film it and I might just have to come back and um, come back periodically and show you sort of snapshots of how I'm getting on Okay, so this is the uh, kind of, I suppose, the first layer of my of my little uh, spring wreath. <laughs> now I'm going to add a lot more leaves so that these flowers will just be kind of peeking through the leaves. And then um, I'll probably put the smallest flowers will end up kind of near at the top and just tucked in around. And then I'll probably tuck these and I've, I've got some more of these coloured twigs as well to go in. Um, yeah I'm getting there I'm getting there and the last thing of all will be to just do some little dots of paint wherever the centers of the flowers are showing and I probably will want to cut some more of the browner kind of twigs I don't know if this is really going how I wanted it to but we'll see I'm going to keep going with it kind of tempted to get my hot glue gun out because it would be easier okay so I'm going to um, add another layer to this and then I'm going to come back and and uh, uh, show you how it how it turned out right i have nearly finished layering all these up now i've burnt several fingers with my hot glue gun <laughs> but it was worth it so i'm nearly done now i might decide to put more cardboard layers on the back and i certainly need to do something to tidy up the back and one day <laughs> maybe i should have kept the kept the eggs and, and made it into a nest so I've just got a few more of these little um, blue flowers to dot around just to finish it off. I've got some of the smaller white ones as well, but I feel like I've probably got enough white now. I used up nearly everything I'd got. I forgot about the tissue. So what I was going to do with the tissue is tear up little bits of it and um, make it into kind of blossom to, to stick on some of these branches, you know. Or, but I've just decided I, I, I think I might look a bit... Uh, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to keep that for a collage on that. Oh look, I nearly, nearly forgot. Oops, nearly forgot these. I've got to squeeze these in somewhere. Oops. Whoop. Oh, for Pete's sake! This is why I didn't, uh, I didn't film all this because you'd have been watching me dithering for hours. This is still using stuff that's in the box, isn't it? It's quite pretty. No, I think I'm going to leave those. Well, I've not left much, it's those few leaves there, one of the eggs, a few of the flat, yeah I've wasted very very little there. I could say I'll save them for something else but I probably won't to be honest. Cut another piece of card to tidy it up, I think that's what I'll do and use the back of this or that. Which do we think? That's pretty isn't it? 
Okay, I'll decide about that tomorrow. Um, the last thing I need to do tonight is do my dotting. So I think I'm going to just need the white and the yellow for that. And then I can leave this, leave it to set overnight. As I say, that one of the lovely things I, I think about these paints is that when you dot them straight on like this, out of the straight out of the bottle, when they you have to leave them for quite a long time to dry, but they set into a raised shape, which is really nice. A little bit of springtime. So I'm going to take a photo of that tomorrow and put on because um, the camera definitely isn't doing justice to the lovely colours of these of these paints. And uh, I, I think these um, really lovely paints, I think I'm going to have to go and get some of the other colours. I enjoyed using this as well. I didn't use it as much, but um, I liked that you could mix it with water. You could mix it with these to tone them down a bit. Shall I hold it up a little bit closer so you can see? But I'd be wise to say I'll take photos and put on the end as well. So you can see the colours a bit better. That's me done. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you again really soon. Oh, and um, I will put uh, uh, my link tree thing in the description box because you can um, find all my socials on there, including the new Artifartist Discord server. So if you haven't tried Discord yet, don't be scared, jump in, give it a go. If I can do it, anyone can. And it's just a lovely place to uh, just just chat, share your creations, get inspiration, um, and just uh, just connect really, and just uh, all, all sort of get to know each other a bit better. Um, you can go in there anytime. I will pop in and out uh, during the course of, of, of the day um, and evening. <laughs> I won't I won't always be there but that doesn't matter you can you know you could just go in there talk amongst yourselves share things get to know each other it's brilliant um quite a few people joined um during the course often just after the the live stream the other day and uh, it's been lively ever since so it's really nice to see so it's very exciting so I will see you on there and I'll see you on here and I'll see you very soon bye <laughs> what a load of waffle shut up